Well, Mark, back for our monthly get-together. Yeah, it's been quite eventful since the last one, hasn't it? Has, it has, and it, as you would expect, mm. one topic actually dominates today. Yeah. Not completely, but nearly. Yeah. So let's get straight in there. Mm. Multiple fans. If Michael Eisner buys the club, will there be either a change of location or an increase of capacity at Fratton Park? Um, I think a lot of the questions you're obviously going to ask me, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to hide behind the not fact. Not mine, not mine. No, I know, I know, and it's really difficult at this moment in time, but as our statement said, we are now into a period of 70-day due diligence and negotiations, and I'm duty-bound not to comment on them, um, negotiations and, and the due diligence process that is currently taking place. So... I'm going to, in regards of that, that's something that Trevor will have to speak to Michael about. You Trevor know, Birch. Trevor yeah. Birch, sorry, yeah, Trevor Birch will have to talk to Michael about, and hopefully when the deal is put before the shareholders, all them type of, that type of information will be there, and prior to any vote, Michael will be able to come over and explain to himself, person, explain himself personally to the shareholders and fans generally just what his plans and intentions are for the football club. But we're not at that stage yet. Is 70 days written in stone or can you do that quicker? Or? No, listen, any, anything it could be done quicker. Um, if it's getting to a point where it's nearly done, I assume, at 70 days and people want to extend it by another week or two then, again, I don't think there'll be any issues in that. But 70 days is the sort of type of time frame everyone is working to. OK. We're not going to name people here because obviously there's so many questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. But... <laughs> And I, I think this might be self-explanatory anyway. What yeah. would be the benefits of Michael Eisner coming in? Um, you know, he's, he's business now, um, investment, you know, which is obviously the, the key point in it. And hopefully getting the club back to where we all believe it should be in the championship and the premiership. But I don't think for any minute no one's saying we can't do that without him. You know, we just have to take a balanced view, look at all the facts and figures that are put in front of us and, and let shareholders have the ultimate say on, on whether they accept a proposed deal or not. Will he be staying on as chief executive if he does? I'd like to, but again, that's really going to be down to Michael. Um, and, you know, it's, I don't want it to be any part of the negotiating process because this isn't about me. It's not about any individual. It's about what is right for the football club. So I'll just make it clear. I obviously would like to. I love, I've had a great four years here. I'd like to carry it on in the next part of its journey should that be the route that the fans want to take it and the shareholders want to take it but ultimately that will be a decision for Michael Eisner and his team. What would change? I suppose that's uh, again, uh, again unanswerable. <laughs> it's, it's not unanswerable. Um, we've run the club very very well for four seasons. We've got it into a, a great you know fantastic position where someone of the calibre of Michael Eisner is interested in it. That's Great, fantastic credit to everyone associated with the football club, the, the board of directors, you know, myself, Tony Brown, Anna Mitchell, the rest of the executive team, you know, not, not naming anyone individually, you know, I think as a team, everyone's done a great job. Yourself, Dan, Colin Farmer, you got, I, don't, I don't want to leave anyone out, so if I just generalise it and I, say... I mean, so you're not <laughs> just anyone, you're not everyone. Really, I can't please everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, we've got the club into an absolutely fantastic position um, and as I've said now the decision is going to be really based upon what model does the club want to pursue in the future. Would the shareholders get their money back? Again that's part of Trevor to negotiate with, with Michael. What would the priorities be? <laughs> um, in knowing, I'm not, again I'm not preempting anything here, the priorities for everyone at the football club Priority number one has to be safety and security at Fratton Park. Um, so I would hope that anything to do with any deal would, you know, um, address the the need for investment at Fratton Park. That's that's my one personal key wish. But you know, again, that's part of the negotiating process. So I don't really want to veer on that too much. How does it get decided whether Michael comes or not? I suppose that is one you can answer. Yeah, I can. Yeah, that's quite. Quite simply, um, the board will have a look at the final proposals. This is, I believe, what the structure is going to be, you know, when Trevor's done his work. So there'll be a, a final final offer. The board will look at that. Um, you know, I think that they will take their own view and opinion, both as directors and shareholders, and then it will go to 
the shareholders generally of what of the PST currently own 48%. So in their block of the 48%, um, they'll have an internal vote um, and on a pure, I believe, 50 plus 1% majority that then votes the trust as a block for the 48%. Then you've got the other 52%, which is made up of high net worth stroke presidents, and they'll have their own vote. And overall, we have to get 75% if you know this deal is going to go through. It all seems a bit time consuming. It, it does, but when you, you think really there's 16, 17 other the presidents that, that can be done in a day, um, the issue with the trust is obviously slightly more complicated because of how many shareholders they have, mm -hmm. but I'm sure they're, they are currently working on that. But look, to stress, fans have it in their own capacity. In their own hands. And again, I keep saying fantastic credit to everyone involved with the football club that we're at a point where you know, we're in, in talks with someone of the, the calibre of Michael Eisner and you know, ultimately it will be their decision on the way they want to take the club forward. Now, before we talk about if it doesn't happen, just one more if it does, mm -hmm. fans would still have a percentage of the club or not? I don't know. That's going to be part of the negotiating process, obviously, that Trevor's dealing with. Mm. Now, so again, it, I don't want to preempt that. If it doesn't happen, can we still get to the Premiership beyond whatever? Um, I can only talk financially uh, because... There's always exceptions. You know, Leicester won the league last year and they were 5,000 to 1. Um, Burton, against all the odds, are in the championship, although currently, um, you know, finding it quite tough this year, as you would in the championship. Um, a few years ago, Yeovil made it through to the championship. Um, fortunately, now back down to League Two, but they did make it. Mm. But I think it's beyond any reasonable doubt that financially now the championship is has become a very, very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a very, very difficult place to survive unless you have got substantial external investment. Um, it's the average debts, I believe, you know, the, late, the latest figures that I saw um, were approaching £50 million per club debt. Um, average wage bills, the last figures I saw, up at £23 million per club. And that's without a lot of within them figures, owners writing off debts and putting money in as equity. So that's excluding them figures. Um, so it is, you can't get away from the fact, all right, you can argue whether it's 50 million or 20 million, 30 million, but there's still tens of millions, that is clear. Um, so as a rule, we will struggle financially in the championship. But as I say, football is not an exact science. There are clubs that do buck the trend, but they tend not to buck the trend for very long. It's very, very short term, you know, because at that point when a club does become successful, your players, managers, executive become the prey of other clubs with a lot more money. And um, that's just the harsh reality of it. I'm not, I'm not saying I agree with it, far from it. You know, I wish every club was a fan-owned club, but unfortunately they're the rules and they're the rules that we currently have to play by. So to put this to bed neatly, yeah. it all will be revealed at some stage. You'll get... Yeah news as we go along yeah um, and that's that's where we are yeah it's, it's it sort of goes against the principles to a degree of being a fan owned club that we are not out there you know um, giving a blow by blow account of what is going on in the negotiating process but we've we've never done that with player transfers so um, we have to respect that we are a business there are contracts that have to be adhered to and honored and respected you know um, and we're currently in a due diligence process and that requires the utmost confidentiality at this point. Now, meanwhile, life at Fratton Park still goes on. Carries on, on. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Paul on Facebook says, I'm a season ticket holder in the North Stand Lower. It drives me and my son mad when fans who can't find their seats at the beginning of the game, they ask the stewards at the front who seem to be different every game, perhaps stick with the same ones for the area of the stand at least then they might know how roughly where fans sit or a better idea, maybe put numbers on seats again. Yeah, I mean, every seat should have a number. If, if I would ask, ask him to write in um, to, to yourself um, mm. if there's not a, a seat, a number with, you know, on his seat, um, 
In regard to the stewards, it's it's a difficult position at the moment because the turnover of stewards at the, at the moment is just horrendous. Trying to keep and retain stewards um, is really difficult for us, but it is something we we strive to to attain in, in regards of getting a settled workforce, especially on a, a match day, but that, that is proving difficult at the moment. But if you write in with the seat numbering, we'll try and address that. And obviously we do try and, where possible, keep stewards in their same stand and, and ideally in the same section at every game. Good point to stress that if people have got complaints, we, we are very, um, we're, we're, know, here, yeah, we're here, we're here all the time. Yeah, yeah, and you know, that's one thing I think since we've come out of administration, we have done very, very well is, We've introduced this policy of, you know, every email gets answered. Um, mm. And, you know, we've stuck rigorously to that. And, and you, you know yourself, Johnny, that's part of your job now. You oversee all of that. So when complaints come in or, or praise even to, to each relevant department, your job and now is, is to oversee that and make sure that people do get a reply. And we've got files that deep to prove that, haven't so we? So there you go, just to give me a plug, Johnny Moore <laughs> at, at pompeyfc.co.uk. Yeah. Right, on we go. Pompey reserves, or whatever we like yeah, to the call under tw- them. Under 23s, yeah. Yeah, done tremendously well this season. <laughs> Incredible. Against yeah. all the odds. Yeah. If they Fantastic. should get to the final of the Premier League Cup, yeah. where would the final be held? Um, it, I believe it's a, t- a two-leg final. It has been for the last few seasons. Um, it's not something I've really looked at at the moment, but I believe it's over two legs. Carl anyway. on Instagram. And just on that, I mean, if depending on where we was with the first team and that, you know, maybe something we would look to have at Fratton Park. And, yeah. But until we get there, we, we don't really But again, Haven't and Waterlooville have done a great job. Oh, I've got a, yeah, can I put that on record as well, please? Yeah. Haven't and Waterlooville, you know, once again have been absolutely fantastic, you know, helped us out knowing this season. And, and that'll be part of the consideration if we was to get to the final, and I know we're running ahead of ourselves, that would be quite difficult to pull it away from them so they're, they're, that will be part of the decision yeah, yeah. making process because they've been great to us all the way through yeah, this yeah cow on instagram update on kit supplier please yeah sundico's now you know next season running into its final year funnily enough I've, I've just got back from going to see another kit supplier um their their offices and their, their manufacturing base um and we're going through a period of due diligence with each kit supplier at the moment Tender documents will be going out in the next few months and hopefully we'll have a decision before the start of the new season. Steve on Facebook. On Saturday, it seems that some seats were sold to multiple fans in the Milton End, which meant people started sitting on the steps and arguments occurred with stewards. Could this issue be dealt with quicker if it would happen again? Yeah, it's down to obviously steward numbers and people arriving at what time they do that have probably never sat in the Milton Inn before, so don't know where they're going and take the first available seat. And that then has a knock-on effect of, well, he's sat in my seat, so I'm just not going to cause any trouble, so I'm going to sit here. Mm. And all of a sudden you've got two and it's just the ripple effect. Yeah. Um, so it is something we're looking at and something we, we deal with on a game-by-game basis. Bradley on Twitter, perhaps getting a bit ahead of himself at the moment. When will the club be announcing details of pre-season plans? As if we are going abroad again, fans need time to sort things out. Yeah, that will be decided over the next four weeks. So, we'll, as always, we'll try and get it out as quickly as we can. But um, in, in regards to the pre-season plans, it's, it's going to be difficult because we don't know what league we're going to be in yet. So, where we might be setting up pre-seasons if we stay in League 2 against League 1 clubs... Um, if you go into League One, you, you're going to want a different level of competition in, in the lead up to your to your first game of the season. So until we actually know that, we can't now anything down at the moment. No, no, there's more pressing concerns at the moment. Probably there are, yeah. But there's, there's, the, what's important is that we we carrying on running the club. Um, you know, we carrying on our normal day to day duties, and and that is absolutely key to to what we're doing. So behind the scenes, everything's carrying on exactly as normal. Kev on Instagram. Are we allowed to pitch invade if we are promoted this season, or will you all be killjoys again? <laughs> I wouldn't say we're killjoys. <laughs> it's rules and regulations. Um, listen, uh, where can I say this? It's last game of the season. We win promotion. Um, I think it would be difficult for the stewards to to keep the wave of people that may want to go on the pitch and celebrate with the, the players, but. Obviously, we're duty-bound to do our best to make sure that doesn't happen. 
Yeah, which is a very diplomatic answer. Diplomatic I think, right? answer. So we're, not gonna, <laughs> we're not going to be killjoys at all, are we? we? No, shh, we're not going to be killjoys. No, OK, Johnny. Well, you can say that, but I can't. Uh, okay. Good, I will. <laughs> so, been quite a busy period in your life at the moment. Yeah, it has. Obviously, you know, there's been a lot going on with the stadium. Um, generally, the last couple of months, um, we've had the Michael Eisner interest ticking along in the background for a number of months. And during that period, we've had to carry on and keep keep the good ship Pompey sailing in the right direction. So it, it has been difficult. Lane says I've aged 10 years. I think probably it's about two. But probably about five, I would yeah. say. Yeah, as soon as I get a bit of a suntan, I'll look all right again. So, uh, But no, it has been difficult. But it's, listen, it's not, I keep saying it's not about me. It's about there's been a lot of work going on behind the scenes. Everyone's staff have been exemplary. Um, you know, on the pitch, things touch wood have been going in the right direction. I was going to say know. on the pitch, we haven't mentioned that. <laughs> I haven't even mentioned it, have we? Wow, we're third. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, so that's sort of, you know, ticking along nicely. But I'm very, very lucky here. The staff we've got at the moment, um, whatever league we're in, they are absolutely top draw. You know, I think most of our staff now are at such a level they could drop into any club in any league and hold their own, even right up into the, to the Premiership. So I'm very proud if, of anything of our staff and where we've come as a club generally so long may it continue and this was all pretty painless this it was pretty painless yeah, yeah. well done yeah. thank you john <laughs> thank you all right thanks everyone um, just enjoy the ride <laughs>